Now, the Lockheed C-130 Hercules is one crazy airplane. I mean, there must be a reason why it is so timeless. I mean, it's been manufactured since the 1950s and it's still ongoing. Yes, they're still building it nowadays. It can take off anywhere. Unprepared runways for takeoff and landings are no problem at all. And it was designed as obviously this military cargo airplane here in the cockpit that looks very much 1950s. This guy has... Uh, Great posture work there. Jesus Christ, you should go to the gym. This one isn't looking very comfortable. Why would you put people into the planes? Like, it just makes it worse. That is not, what is that of a build? Either way, here from the cockpit, we can open the ramp right now. And look at this. We've got airdrop supplies. Yes, this plane is incredibly capable and it can fly anywhere once again, but it was never designed, of course, as an airliner. I mean, okay, we have seats right here where you can transport some troops. But like, can you imagine how great it would be to go take off in your C-130 and then igniting the, <laughs> the JTO rockets. Look at that. The JTO rockets have come on. This will allow us to genuinely take off at anywhere. That is pretty ridiculous. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Wonderful. Look at that. The JTO rockets have brought our plane up into the sky after just a few hundred meters. And so in today's video, let's go ahead and think about this possible scenario. Could this plane be turned into a crazy passenger airliner? I mean, first of all, yes, lots of militaries use this plane, but there's also civilian operators. And now, everybody, I've done what I can do best, and that is put lots of seat into an airplane. I mean, we've done this with a C-17. And so, welcome aboard Qatar Airways' new C-17. I have done something stupid. Or even the Airbus Beluga. A whole nother cabin with a fourth floor reveals itself. Ladies and gentlemen, people always underestimate my insane genius. Here I figured out, damn, this plane is quite useless of an airliner. I mean, first of all, this thing doesn't have a lot of space at all. We've got 15 rows of 737 type seats, seven of which are very much restrained because like, yeah, the width of the whole plane itself is not very impressive at all, especially where the wing is situated. In seven rows, you can only fit two seats. Overall, we only have 76 seats on board, which is nearly just as much as the ATR-72, a plane that cost $26 million new, whereas the C-130 costs 44 to over $80 million new. So this all makes no sense. Like, just to compare it, this plane, of course, has four engines, turboprop engines, and million dollars engines, four of them, while the ATR-872 only has two of them. Also, this plane is made for airlines. We have actual proper windows, and we have a cargo hold down here, something we haven't taken into account for at all. We've got no cargo hold. We barely brought, we may, may just have a lavatory. But that's very much it. But this plane, yes, of course, has JTO rockets and it can take off anywhere. Maybe for some extreme scenarios, like, nah, this is probably the dumbest idea ever. Either way, let's see what if, you know, money didn't matter in the world and we would all be wanting to fly on this 1950s military airplane. Uh, what, what, would, you know, what would be possible? Because a lot of things would be possible. Look at us taking off. We can do some proper short runway testing around here. I mean, genuinely, there's no airplane that could fly 76 people to an island like St. Barth, which we're at right now, which is very heavy on my computer, which is lagging. But the C-130 can truly carry so much weight, 70,000 kilograms, whereas the ATR can only be 23,000 kilograms heavy. Like, we could totally fill our seats up with extremely fat people, and it wouldn't matter. Anyway, let's go take off now. Full power and to the eight, yeah, looking good, and we're moving. We're moving, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go and put out the JTO rocket just to go faster. Ain't no problem. And look at that, we can take off. Uh, this is kind of like a picture die. Sh what the hell? There we go. We, uh, as you can see, no problem taking off at all. Hmm, but we won't be able to land here because my computer will start lagging. We will need some sort of a more crazy runway. For example, uh, this one over there. It's also on like an island, and uh, this is a 360 meter long runway. A runway that I would be even scared to fly in with a Cessna. But now we're doing it with a 76 people airliner, the C-130. A plane that can fly at extremely low speeds as well, I figured. Look, we're at 100 knots and it doesn't really care. We can put up the flap to around 35 degrees right here. That's not a lot, but look at the flap surface. This is a huge amount of flaps. That's just ridiculous. We can land it here. We can land it here without problem. You're okay. You're okay. Okay. Let's put her down. Yeah. Okay. I might have taken a bit too much grass there. 
That's fine. That's fine. Oh, we're not even using reverse trust, but yet we're still stopping. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, we're not even using reverse trust, but yet we're still stopping, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I am talking about. Yeah, just like that, we've been able to land here on a very short runway with a lot of people on board. Not bad, huh? And even short unpaved gravel runways. No problem. There we go. We can take off anywhere and land, of course. Like, look, we're here on the island of... Papa Westray, which is part of the shortest fly in the world. Wait, let's put on the JTO rockets. That's gonna be very cheap for the prices. Great ticket pricing there. And we can fly right over to the left to Westray, which is where the shortest flight really happens. But instead of flying with a small little BM2 Islander, we're flying here with a Hercules C-130. We're actually all already on approach here. All right, so let's pull it off. Here's the runway already. That was genuinely the shortest flight in the world. We managed to beat time, I'm pretty sure with a lot more people on board. So there we go. We are landing a little bit too fast. Doesn't matter. We can stop now. Yes, look at that. We have done a landing. Yes, that worked well. Now, granted, um, this would be an extremely bad airliner. It would be uncomfortable, would be way too loud. And the extra headroom doesn't really help in comforting the passengers, right? Um, I don't even want to begin to imagine the actual operating costs of this. This must be pretty crazy. Especially when we put the, uh, the Jada rockets on. Let's go full power. No, this is this is extremely stupid. But hey, I would love a ride on this one. Look at that. <laughs> this is the shortest runway in the world and no problem for the C-130. But hey, this would be a cool, cool idea anyway, right? I, I wouldn't, I would love to fly this. Would love to be a passenger on board this and experience the hardest landing on the shortest runway in the world. Let's go and just pull it off quickly. Yeah. Oh my god, that was insane. That was just crazy. But no problem with the C-130. It can, uh, we, we can land hard. This has got very sturdy landing gear. And as you can see, we've been able to pull it off, even with the passenger door open. Some people might have flown out, though. That was extremely hard. Now, hmm, hmm. Ah, uh, this is the Bush Idol Bob hel helipad. Let's me see. Uh, let's go and turn it around a little bit. Looking good. Full power into the J-T rockets. Let's do it. Yeah, you can do it. Full power into the engines as well. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard the fastest elevator in the world. You can do it. Yes, and it can. <laughs> Very smart. Um, we all can jump out now if, you, if you'd like that. Um, so, everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. By the way, have I talked about, uh, like, boarding times will be quick. We've got a built-in stair. Hey, that's a... Seller. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.